so satisfying. Howdy and welcome back to my channel. It's your humble Pisces Diana Chu here at Slow Gaze. I don't know what that was, but I did it anyway. I'm so, so excited to talk to you today about the Westman Atelier iPods. <laughs> they should play music or something, right? <laughs> this is the Le Jour or the Days colorway. It has neige, tabac, and chocolat. It's currently sold out everywhere that I think you can find it. I'm going to talk about the ingredients, the texture of this, the color, absolutely. I did a two-day wear test. I'll talk about the packaging and my final thoughts. So if that sounds good to you and you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I love doing this kind of content. I'm all about using up my stash, so I like to dive into my collection and tell you all that I can about it and hopefully help you make decisions about your own collection. Let's dive in. So this retails for 88 US dollars and and they come in this like very spaced out cardboard box where they feel like little museum items, little art objects. And then you can stack them together with magnets. The magnets are very strong. They don't fall apart. I love it because you can travel with them. You can choose to bring some or all colors together. And it's, it's kind of like the Fenty Beauty matchsticks where they all come together and you can kind of have it in your kit and you don't have to fumble for them every time. It just feels like a very ergonomic thing. They're quite heavy, I would say. Each little pod has the name of the product on the back. So this is Chocolat. It also tells you a little bit more about the product. They are made in Italy and they have a 12 month shelf life. The little blind embossing says Westman Atelier on the front. When you open them up, um, I can't tell if this is a metal that's been coated or it feels a little more like plastic. And on the cap, if you can see it, has the Westman Atelier heart logo kind of blind embossed in there. So that's the little brand moment that you get. Feels very luxurious. I like that little haptic feedback where you click it in place. And of course the magnets are really fun. So because you get three of these, she currently has the Le Jour and La Nuit, I think it's days and nights. Each retails, if you could buy them separately, for about 30 US dollars. And to put that into perspective, Pat McGrath Labs Idols. This is a single shadow that she has, and I think they're the exact same size as what's in her 10 pan palette. I wanted to bring this up because if you're in the luxury beauty space, you probably already know or are familiar with Pat McGrath. This has 1.1 grams of product, and with this packaging, you can't tell how deep the pan goes, but this has 0.8. So you have less in here. This is also around $30, and these are about $25. I would say that the Pat McGrath Labs, which already is super high-end, really luxury product, if you have 10 of these, it does equate to exactly the same price as one of her 10 pan palettes at $125. So you're not really getting too much more bang for your buck with these singles with the palettes you get the packaging and the gorgeous artwork on the cardboard front and the mirror now because i cannot buy these as separate little ipods and i can't choose the colors that i get i think it's really really unfortunate if you're gonna dole out 88 dollars, i feel like you should be able to choose the colors you want because then i will much more likely be able to build my own stack kind of like trinity london but here we only have options for the days or the nights, which has a black caviar color and a nice burgundy color. I also do not like one of these colors and I'll tell you more in a second. These are described as a cream to powder kind of hybrid. It has a lot of the same feeling as like a gel eyeshadow because instead of silica, they replaced it with coconut oil. So if you are sensitive to coconut oil, then I would say this is a definite miss. But if you don't mind it and you love how, let's say, the RMS lip to cheeks or her eye polishes work, I actually think those are a way better deal. I've never experienced a texture like this before. I can basically not mess up with how much product I'm picking up. This is not moussey, it's not whipped, it's not like a cream shadow necessarily. It doesn't have too much bounce to it, so it's kind of similar to, let's say, a densely packed MAC Glow Play blush. It's not quite the ColourPop Super Shock formula either. It's really a hybrid, so I've never experienced it like this. It's quite dense. I think it's nice because, like I said, it's kind of foolproof and it feels made for fingers. I can press pretty hard and I still get product pickup. I can swirl it in and I can get product, but I'm never going to get 
too, too much product, especially with a mid-tone color like this. So I think it's really foolproof and you really can be consistent with a really quick eye look if you want it to be. She mentions on her website that these are supposed to be really buildable and are supposed to like melt into your skin. So it does blow out to a wonderful wash of color. I'm wearing it on my eyes now. This has actually been on my eyes since 9 a.m., maybe an eight hour wear. And you can see that I do have creasing and I'll talk about that in a second. Really diffused, blown out look was super quick to achieve. It's not like the Kosas 10 second eyeshadow where the blending really depends on how quick you move the product, how fast it dries down. This really is just a little dream. It just kind of melts on and then it's already nice and diffused and it looks like a seamless transition on the eyes. So I love that about this. Let's get into the colors, shall we? So you get Neige or Snow, which is a frosty, frosty white. It doesn't pull too pink. It doesn't pull too gold. It really is a true frost. Unfortunately, I've tried this on the cheeks, my cupid's bow. I've tried it under the arch of my brows and even in the inner corner. And with my skin tone, which is very olive, has a lot of yellow in it, this just reads as like a milky sunscreeny cast. So I think that it does not show up well on my skin tone, which is light medium. If you have a much deeper dark chocolate rich skin tone, I feel like this would work really well. It does kind of fade throughout the day, which also I didn't love as a highlighter, but it left this cast on me and I can't explain it. So I, I really can't even use this. I've tried it all over the, over the lid. I've tried it layered under other products and somehow that just makes it look like a little bit of sunscreen, a total miss. I wouldn't want to travel with it. I wouldn't keep it in my kit. This little trio is a little confusing to me because the colors on the outside also kind of correspond to the what's inside, but not as clearly as let's say the night where there's a black one and you can't expect the black inside the pan. So Tabak or the medium bronze shade here is the closest to the outside color. So I can really understand that. But when it comes to these two, there's like a blush, a movie blush and like the shark gray. That's almost the color of my like walls right now. This one feels darker than what's inside the pan. And then this is way lighter than what's inside. This is Chocolat. I understand why Chocolat is inside this blush pink. It's because all of these shades kind of tend a little warm and definitely a little pink. Anything that needs a little bit of rosiness, it's very flattering and it has a lot more nuance to it. There's no shimmer in here. It's not totally flat. It's more like a demi shimmer pearl. There are specks of light inside and it's kind of helping to give your, your skin a little bit more luminosity or make it look more like your skin, but you're not getting chunks of glitter or anything like that. I love that this color can kind of deepen up the outer corners of my eyes and it blends into the other two colors in the set really, really well. I don't think it's dark enough for other skin tones. I would say the same for the Tabak shade, which shows up just well enough for me but it could be completely lost on just a deeper or a tan skin tone. This one tends a little peach. It's on my eyes right now and it looks quite bronze or true kind of gold in the pan. But if you stare right, right here where I have a lot of the product, that is picking up on the peach tones near my nose or on my blush or the, the color of my lips. So it definitely runs warm and it runs a little peach on me, which you wouldn't expect from this. I wanted to swatch it against the Victoria Beckham Silk Quad, which is her latest quad, which has all shimmers in here. All the rest that she has are matte finishes. And whilst they're beautiful, I love that these work together with the others so that if you have other colors of hers, you can buy this and still feel like you can use both and they don't kind of replicate. This is a great quad to compare with because it's still in the clean beauty space. You could argue that it's in the celebrity makeup space. I compare the swatches of these two because there are also very similar tones. So on the left we have from the top to the bottom Neige to Bach and then below is Chocolat. Silk from Victoria Beckham Beauty. On the top is Linen. 
Then we got copper and finally sandal. Okay, back to the video. Copper, this one on the end, does have a lot more orange or peach if you diffuse it. So I compare this to Tabak here. I also compare this chocolate shade to Sandal right here, which I think is quite similar. And finally, this all over priming lid shade, Linen, in the quad fits really well with this Neige shade. The three iPods tend a lot more peach, a lot more pink toned, and I think they're very flattering. This whole quad is extremely neutral. It's almost like a true copper and a true bronze and a true gold. And we have this lovely linen shade that looks like it has peach on the on the base pigment, but on top it has almost like a chartreuse -y light gold. For the wear test, I did the exact same face base brought in the same way I was using the products and I put on the Westman Atelier iPods for the first day using both my fingers to apply and then a brush to diffuse a little bit. I also wore the Westman Atelier Lip Suede in these two center colors here if I can get it to open. I did a review of this um, and I'll link it down below. It's the second video I ever posted on YouTube, so be kind. Rewind. These two shades here, I wore them throughout the day. The lip suede had blotted down to even more matte. This has cold pressed cherry seed oil that's supposed to be nourishing. At the check-in, these didn't move around or leave like an awkward popsicle ring around my lips. They actually all faded in the same way. The pigment didn't even fade really. It was more the nourishing oil had absorbed into my lips so it felt a little more dry but it wasn't like a liquid lipstick. The first day of the wear test I was experiencing the exact same thing that I'm experiencing now because I've been wearing these all day. You can see the creasing is so apparent at least if I open my eyes like this. What I like is that even though product has traveled into my crease, there's still color that's kind of set down onto my lids. So it almost looks like there's just like a drawn crease. It's not like all the product has traveled and completely like just gone away and just is sitting in the crease. Maybe the amount of product that I put on with a finger, it could have been lessened or if I had used sort of the stiff brush that Gucci Westman uses in her tutorials. But you got this blown out look from just using fingers, but the creasing is definitely there. The second day of the wear test, I put these shadows from Victoria Beckham Beauty on top of the corresponding colors. So the overall look was very similar, but I did find that it helped a lot. I think the creasing still existed at the end of the day, but the color was mostly set down, mostly behaving. What was strange is that I found these pigments on top had migrated into the crease more than the actual base pigments that I had underneath. You really might have to go in with the slightest whisper of product to really just kind of set it down and it might not crease as much on you. Or if you set it down as an eye primer, really use it as that. The less the better. Definitely improved with powder on top. So final thoughts. I love, love, love these two shades that I'm wearing on my eyes today. Chocolate and the Taba shade. I'll use these when I travel, I can use them as eye primers and I feel good that they're clean. That's the clean beauty fantasy, you know, that I'm chasing and, and these definitely deliver. I don't mind the creasing because like I said, some of the product still sets down so it just looks a little bit more undone without it all lifting off and looking messy. Biggest downfall is not liking this shade. It makes me sad not to use product up. I really think this could look good on a lot of people, but I wish I could build my own stack. And to let this go to waste for $30 really kind of breaks my heart. I'm going to have to use it as a highlight or at least under highlight, kind of like a glow cream base. But if you really are certain that these three colors or the ones in the La Nuit work for your skin tone, they're worth it for a really quick face. Totally great for travel outside of a pandemic. I love the look of them, the weight of them. They're great on a vanity, but I personally would like to use up all of my makeup, humanly impossible. But if you're eyeing these and you haven't tried the RMS eye polishes or you haven't tried other cream shadows, notably the ones from Tom Ford or Charlotte Tilbury, I think those I would totally gravitate towards first because they really don't budge. The color payoff is amazing. Those work like eye primers even better and they have a way better shade range. Victoria Beckham's 
lid lusters. She has one in mink, midnight, onyx, and blonde. Don't you love how I know that? I'm obsessed with those because those really bring out the shine. They're very much like the hourglass scattered light and they don't move. These are way more basic. I would argue they're good for dry skin, for mature skin, because they have that rosy tint and even if they crease on crepey skin, they look like skin, they feel undone, and they don't feel too made up. I like how foolproof these are. I like how forgiving the formula is. Let me know if you liked this review. Like the video, comment, I read every comment, subscribe. I'd love it. It would really mean a lot to me. Help my channel grow. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video. Adios.